Hey guys, good day. My name is Paul Vindolan and welcome to my channel. Alright, so to get started, um, gaya ng nabasa ninyo sa pinaka-title ng video, it says here na Canada Federal Skilled Worker Program. Find out if you are eligible. So in this video, ituturo ko sa inyo kung paano malaman yung eligibility ninyo and also ipocompute natin yung actual score ko nung time na nag-apply ako for Federal Skilled Worker Express Entry. To get started, so I just would like to inform everyone na lahat ng sasabihin ko ay based sa mga information na nakuha ko online and based sa personal experience ko. So you may feel free to visit their official website. It's here, um, posted on the screen and check it yourself. But I'll make sure na bahagi ko sa inyo yung mga alam kong information kasi nagpasos ako personally so medyo alam ko pa. Medyo fresh pa sa akin yung mga information on how you will be computing for your points and assess your eligibility. Alright, so let's proceed with six selection factors. Federal Skilled Worker Program Express Entry. So dito sa part na to, i-explain ko sa inyo how it works. Ang Express Entry kasi, for you to be able to get eligibility, para mag-apply, you need to score at least 6 to 7 points out of 100. So, paano ba makakuha ng 6 to 7 points? Or how do you get points? So, there are different factors. So, on this page, we have to assess your language skill points, education points, work experience points, age points, arranged employment in Canada points, and adaptability points. Alright, so let's proceed with language skill points. So, for this topic, pag-uusapan natin kung ano yung mga language tests na applicable or accepted ni Canada. So you have their English language testing or you may also take French language test. So kung saan kayo mas comfortable, yun yung itake ninyo. But for us Filipinos, syempre yung, yung English exam yung ititake natin. And for that, I took IELTS. That's the International English Language Testing System. Um, I took IELTS General Training Module. Kasi yun yung prescribed, yun yung recommended ni Canadian government. Alright, so of course, sa pagtik ng IELTS, I needed some preparations. I actually enrolled myself to a review center. So, I enrolled ako sa Niners IELTS Review Center. And yung mother branch ko was in Quezon Ave. Share ko lang sa inyo a quick story nung time na nagre-review pa ako. I was working in a BPO as a company nurse nung time na yon in 2017. Tapos, ang ginagawa ko, kasi yung shift ko from 8am to 5pm lang. So, pagpatak ng alasin ko, naglalak na ako ng clinic. Tapos, gumagawa ako ng mga writing test kasi alas sa is pa yung ano ko eh yung schedule ko for review so pumapasok ako from Monday to Friday from 8am to 5pm tapos nagre-review ako from 5 to 5.30 tapos babiyahay ako from Philcoa to Quezon Avenue from 5.30 to 6 tapos 6pm to 9pm yung review ng IELTS so ganun ko binalance ganun ko chinaga yung IELTS review para at least makakuha ng magandang score and I think it paid off naman and aside from that, gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo na yung, yung bayad for the review center, it was around, I think it costed me around 4,000 to 5,000 pesos. Nung time na yun, I'm not sure kung magkano na siya ngayon. But yung amount na yun na unlimited yung review for a year was sulit. So I would recommend. At saka maganda yung one-on-one -on -one session nila, especially doon sa, sa part kung saan kayo nahirapan. Um, they can do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Na ang pinaka-tinik advantage ko yung one-on-one -on -one coaching sa writing kasi among all four subtests na meron yung IELTS yung writing yung pinakamahirap sobrang challenging siya in a way na marami kasing technicalities and kailangan ng maraming tracks so after months and months of practice Yun, dumating ako sa point na I think ready na ako to take my IELTS exam. So, saan ba ako nag-register? So, in the Philippines, we have two um, accredited testing centers. One is yung British Council and the other one is IDP. So, I opted to go with IDP. Yung pina reason ko was because nung chinek ko yung British Council, wala silang testing center within Quezon City kasi taga Quezon City ako. So, upon checking IELTS IDP Education's website, I learned na meron silang testing center sa Quezon City. Eh, medyo mas accessible sa akin kesa pumunta ako na Makati. So, when I learned nga na merong Quezon City um, area for the testing, nag-register ako agad. So, yung amount na binayaran ko, I think it was roughly gantong price, 11,995. Yung amount, nasa ganyang price yung binayaran ko for general training module and nag-exam ako sa Luxet Hotel. So, magkahiwalay yung speaking. It was done in Ortigas. It was a Thursday. Tapos yung 
pinaka-exam ko ng reading, writing, and listening, Saturday yon. So, merong ilang araw na pagitan sa mga exams. So, so hindi siya buong araw, apat agad yung itetest niyo. Okay, so, I'll teach you now kung paano i-compute yung IELTS score niyo and convert siya sa equivalent points sa CLB. Alright? So, always remember guys na CLB below 7, kapag medyo mababa yung score na nakuha nyo sa IELTS, you will not be eligible to apply. So, merong minimum score na kailangan, which is mostly 6 sa bawat subtest. So, dapat wala ka mas mababa sa 6. Or else, below CLB 7 yung level yon and hindi ka magiging eligible to apply. Okay, so let's proceed with listening. So, ang gagamitin natin na example is yung actual IELTS result ko na ko ng June 24 of 2017. So, that was around 3 years ago na halos magtatatlong taon na tong IELTS result. Okay, for listening, I got 7.5. Ang 7.5 ay equivalent to CLB level 8. And CLB level 8 is equivalent to 5 points. Next, for reading, I got 6. So, ang 6 ay equivalent to CLB level 7. At ang CLB level 7 ay equivalent to 4 points. For writing, writing isa sa pinakamahirap na task sa IELTS. So, there. Dito ko pinaka nag-focus talaga. Sinulit ko yung IELTS review ko sa one-on-one -on -one coaching sa writing. Talagang after work, gumagawa ko ng mga writing tasks. Tapos, dinadala ko sa Quezon Ave para ipacheck. Tapos, yun. Doon ako natuto. And also, guys, kasi time pressured yung IELTS exam wala kang buong araw para gawin nyo. So, for IELTS writing, one hour lang ibibigay sa inyong time para gumawa ng dalawang writing tasks. So, let's proceed with the competition. So, for writing, I got 6 points. Then, ang 6 ay equivalent to CLB level 7. At ang CLB level 7 ay equivalent to 4 points. Then, last but not the least, we have speaking. I got 7.5. That's equivalent to CLB level 10. CLB level 9 or higher is equivalent to 6 points. So, papa ito sa inyo yung summary ng score ko para mas madali ninyo maintindihan. For my IELTS result, listening, I got 7.5, equivalent to CLB level 8, and equivalent to 5 points. Okay, um, for reading, I got um, the score of 6, CLB level 7, and equivalent to 4 points. For writing task, I got 6, ang CLB level nun ay 7, at equivalent points nun ay 4. And last but not the least, speaking, I got 7.5 sa IELTS score ko, that's equivalent to CLB level 10 and ang equivalent points nun ay 6. So, all in all, I got 19 points for language skills points. So, meron akong 19 over 100. So, ilan na lang yung kailangan ko bunuin para makuha ng 6 to 7 points as a minimum requirement para maging eligible. So, let's proceed with education points. The maximum points that you can get for this assessment is 25 points. So, if you have foreign education, you must have an educational credential assessment or ECA report for immigration purposes from a designated organization showing that your education is equal to a completed certificate, diploma, or degree from a Canadian secondary institution or high school and or post-secondary institution. So, merong list online sa official website ni Canada kung ano yung mga agencies or offices na pwedeng mag-conduct ng educational assessment ninyo. So, nung in my case, I chose World Education education services. Ganito yun nangyari. So, you need to create an account online to pay $220. So, that's around 8,000 pesos para makapag-request ng assessment. From there, bibigyan kanila ng academic record request form from US. Ito yun. Then, nung nakuha ko na yan, I went to my college university. Then, I requested for this process na i-assist nila ako. They required me to provide or to secure copy piece of my, my diploma and TOR. Yung mga yun, pinacertified through copy ko sa school rin. Then, after ko makomplete lahat ng mga requirements, itong mga documents na to, nilagay sa isang um, letter size envelope, naka-seal, tapos pinadala via DHL. So, approximately 1,000 pesos yung nagasos for pagpapadala sa Canada. Then, after ilang, I, I think ilang weeks rin yung dumaan. So, if I can remember it correctly, I think pinadala to ng November something to it. 
last week last week ata doon noong November tapos na-receive ko yung result via email at saka may hard copy rin ako na na-receive ng December 28 so ito siya so makikita ninyo sa result ng assessment ninyo yung analysis nung West so in my case yung nursing education ko for 4 years in the Philippines ay equivalent lang siya sa 2 years sa education ni Canada kung makikita nyo dito yan secondary school diploma hinanap ko yung category na yan. So, I found it. So, it says here na secondary school diploma and diploma two years. So, level of education for express entry profile, two-year degree diploma or certificate from a program at a university, college, trade, or technical school, or other institute. So, here, 19 points ang equivalent points niya. So, there, ang nakuha kong education points ay 19. So, so far, meron na akong 19 points for my language test or language skills points. Then, meron na akong 19 points or education points. So, ilan na lang para sa 6 to 7 points. Number 3, we have work experience points. So, medyo tricky tong part na to. Ang work experience, maximum points that you can get is 15 points. So, you need first to find your NOC or National Occupational Classification. So, dito determine yung klase ng trabaho na meron kayo nakatumbas sa Canada. As for me, nung tinipe kong nursing, ito siya. Ang NOC ko ay NOC 3012, Registered Nurses and Registered Psychiatric Nurses. Okay, so gusto ko lang i-clear dito na para sa mga kapwa ko nurses regardless okay regardless of your um title kung company nurse ba kayo clinic nurse derma nurse dental nurse occupational health nurse kahit anong type of nurse as long as nurse ang title ninyo pwede pwede sa Canada magpo-fall pa rin siya under NOC 3012 kasi in my case most of my job experiences are all clinic nurse company nurse occupational health nurse hindi ako nag-hospital kasi <laughs> mm. well anyway ayun so, for work experience, nung time ko, 4 to 5 years yung work experience ko nung nagpa-process ako. So, may pinaka-highlight lang dito. Lagay ko dito na only nursing work experiences based on the length of stay written on the issued COEs by the employers. So, hindi pwede mag-round off. Kapag sinabi sa company ninyo na, for example, 1 year lang talaga yung length ninyo. Tapos, sa next trabaho nyo, 9 months. So, 1 year and 9 months lang siya. Hindi pwedeng i-round off or whatnot. So, ganun ka strict yung competition nung work experience points. So, there. Since 4 to 5 years yung total work experience ko as nurse back in the Philippines, ang work experience points na nakuha ko ay 13 points. Next is number 4, age points. So, for age points, the maximum points that an individual can get for this category is 12 points. So, check niyo yung age bracket na meron dito. If you are an individual applying for express entry and you are between 18 years old to 35 years old, you'll definitely get the highest possible score, which is 12 points. And if you're going to check yung age trail, makita ninyo, the older you get, the lower points you get. So, habang patanda na patanda, ibig sabihin pababa na pababa yung equivalent points nun sa edad. Let's say, 35 years old, makuha niya pa yung maximum 12 points. But as you age a year older, let's say, nag-36 na yung tao, 11 points na makuha niya. Same goes with 37 minus 1. So, pababa na pababa hanggang mawala na yung points. The thing here is, do not have to worry kasi kung ano yung age ninyo nung nag-apply kayo, fix yung score na makuha ninyo. Let's say, 35 years old ako nung nag-apply. Tapos, dumaan, nag-birthday ako 36. Pero, sa application ko, 35 years old ako. Ang competition ni Canada doon is 35 years old pa rin and you still have or your 12, hindi siya mababawasan. So, ang pinaka-importante dito is kung kailan yung actual date na nag-apply kayo. Kung ano yung actual age ninyo, yun yung equivalent points na meron kayo. So, don't have to worry about that. In summary, ang pinaka nakuha kong points for each points ay 12 points. Number five, arranged employment in Canada points. So for this part, an individual can get up to 10 points maximum for this. So paano ba magkaroon ng maximum of 10 points? Kailangan ng isang tao ay magkaroon ng valid job offer. Dapat ito ay continuous paid 
full-time work that's gonna be minimum of 30 hours per week, hindi seasonal, at more than one year. Tapos dapat, pasok siya sa occupational listed, skill type 0, or skill level A or B of the National Occupational Classification. Unfortunately for this part, hindi siya applicable sa akin because I have never received and arranged employment in Canada points. So, my points here is 0. Last but not the least, we have number 6, adaptability points. For adaptability points, an individual can get up to 10 points maximum for this specific factor. So, ano-ano ba yung mga bagay na pwedeng makapagbigay sa inyo ng points for this category? Number one, your spouse or partner's language level. So, meaning to say, your spouse or common partner has a language level in either English or French at CLB level 4 or higher in all four language abilities. So, meaning to say, kailangan... CLB level for yung scores niya sa speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Kung ang question nyo, mahirap ba yan? I don't think so. Kasi mababa lang ang CLB level 4. Um, you can check IELTS to assess kung ilan ba yung minimum points para lang makuha ng CLB level 4. Then, your past studies in Canada. So, kapag nag-aral ka noon for at least 2 academic years of full-time studying, then you'll get 5 points. So, um, your spouse or partner's past studies studies in Canada. So, kung yung partner mo naman or yung asawa mo naman nag-aral um, and completed at least two academic years of full-time studying in Canada, then you'll get five points for that. Another would be your past work in Canada. So, ang condition for this part naman, you did at least one year of full-time work in Canada. So, meaning to say, pasok sa skill type 0 or skill level A or B of the National Occupational Classification yung trabaho ninyo and with a valid work permit while authorized to work in Canada. So, kapag meron kayo niyang, then you'll get 10 points. Your spouse or common law partners past work in Canada. So, meaning to say, your, your spouse or partner did at least one year of full-time work in Canada on a valid work permit well, authorized to work in Canada, then you'll get 5 points for that. Then, arrange employment in Canada, that's for 5 points. Unfortunately, yung mga uno na banggit ko, hanggang dyan sa arrange employment in Canada, are not applicable for me. But, itong relatives in Canada, yan yung applicable sa akin. So, I'll tell you why. So, relatives in Canada, you'll get 5 points for that. Um, it says here, you or your spouse or common law partner have a relative who is... First, living in Canada, 18 years old or mas matanda, and a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, then you'll get points for that. Pero dapat, it, ganito yung degree ng relationship nyo dun sa tao. This relative must be a parent, grandparent, child, grandchild, you or your spouse's sibling, mga tito or tita ninyo, or your spouse's niece or nephew. In my case, uh, it is my tita, sister ng father ko, yung relative ko dito sa Canada. And for that, thank you, tita. Um, I got adaptability points of 5 points. So there. Ito na yung pinakasamati ng 6 selection factors total score ko. Meron tayong 6 na categories. So for language skills points, I got 19 points. For education points, I got 19 points. Work experience points, I got 13 points. Age points, I got 12 points. Arranged employment in Canada points, I got 0. Adaptability points, I got 5. So, overall score ko is 68 out of 100. Then, ang sabi dito, balikan lang natin yung pinakumpisa. For 6 selection factors under Federal Skilled Worker Program or Express Entry, if you score 67 points or higher, you may qualify for the Federal Skilled Worker Program. So, when I learned na yun nga, Siyempre, pinurso ko talaga. Gusto ko talaga mag-apply for express entry kasi, siyempre, gusto ko mag-abroad there. So, since pasok yung 68 point out of 100, and ang requirement ng naman is 67, then tinuloy ko yung application ko. There, after, after ko mag-apply, so, it took me around, um, so, pinaka-application ko, I think it started, it start almost two years in the making yung Canada ko, eh, if I'm not mistaken, but, yeah, yung actual application ko, it took me 3 months lang. I'll probably create another video kung paano yung naging process nung application ko. But, but yeah, um, I made it. So, if you guys think na you would wanna do the same, kung na-encourage ko man kayo mag-apply sa Express Entry, especially if you're a professional, professional nurse, professional engineer, accountant, basta graduate ng 4-year course and you think you have enough 
work experience, tapos ready na kayo mag-take ng English exam, then why not try it? I do encourage everyone to do it kasi I think it will be worth it naman. So there, I think yun yung pinaka-summary ng video na to. So there, that's how you check. That's how you find out if you're eligible to apply for express entry here in Canada. So if you have questions guys, um, leave lang kayo ng comment or questions below the box para at least masagot ko. I'll try to answer all the questions as long as alam ko. And please do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And thank you. Thank you for your time. So bye for now.